Hey guys, welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Alfredo. And so far with this series, we've been building our own implementation of the Amazon Echo or Alexa. So if you haven't seen that yet, there'll be a card up here that takes you to the playlist where you can see the rest of the series. And there'll also be a link down in the description where you can see that. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you know when I release a new episode of the series. So if you've been following along so far, you know that we're not just trying to make another piece of software that does speech recognition. We're actually trying to achieve that polish and that refinement that a product like the Amazon Echo has. And even though I don't actually own an Amazon Echo myself, I can for sure tell you that when it comes to installing add-ons, you're not doing so by downloading a file off the internet and then dragging or transferring that file over to the Amazon Echo. That would be a horrible experience. Like, can you imagine that? No one would buy that. Like if you actually had to go ahead and download the file off the internet and then plug the Amazon Echo into your computer and then just drag the file over to some directory on it, that, that would be a horrible user experience. Instead, that experience is made a lot better by giving a user an actual interface they can use to install add-ons. And that's exactly where the Karen app comes in. So I've been talking about this since the beginning of the series. I think it's crucial to have a way for your users to actually go ahead and install add-ons rather than going through all the code or the directories that the way it currently is. So that's exactly what I did. I built the Karen app and it took me about three days. And most of the three days was really just kind of thinking about how to actually design it so that it works the way it's supposed to. And a lot of that was really just getting the infrastructure we need in place so that once we have our actual device, we could actually talk to it, communicate with it properly from the app itself. So the Karen app actually has three main features. And the first one is obviously the most obvious obvious one, the most prevalent one that we actually made the app for, which is the ability to actually install these add-ons from the app itself onto Karen. So like any other piece of software, we had to make decisions here to make sure this thing works the way we wanted to. And obviously the first thing that comes to mind when you think about this is where do we actually store this information? Like we need a place to store all these add-ons. And you can look at things like the Apple App Store, right? And then we have like the Google Store and all that stuff. And they all have a central repository where they store all this information. Now, hosting a few add-ons is not a big deal, especially because the add-ons for carrying that so small anyways there's just literally text files but in the possibility that people actually care enough about the project and want to make their own add-ons i had to think of a way to actually do this so that if i do host the files myself i wouldn't run out of storage because that's a real problem right like if there's too many files i need the storage to be able to back it up so to not be at the mercy of me having to pay for servers i thought okay well what don't we just do what like every other open source software does which is actually store this information on github and that makes it really cool because at this point not only is the software that power is Karen open source, but also are the add-ons to power Karen. So everything is open source, which I really like. So I thought that was a really good way of going about it. Now, with that said, GitHub literally hosts like over a million and something, 10 million, whatever it was the last time I checked. They host a lot of repositories, which means it would really be a pain to go through every single repository or, or some sort of identifier to try and figure out where on GitHub are the actual Karen add-ons stored. Okay, so then I thought I no longer have the problem of actually hosting these add-ons myself because now they're hosting on a GitHub. So what I can do is I could actually make my own site where all the add-ons for Karen can be submitted and then we can literally have our own little app store. So that's what I did because hosting a link is a lot less storage dependent than actually hosting a whole add-on. So that was easily feasible. So that's what I did. So if you actually go to alfredo.lol forward slash Karen, you can actually see all the add-ons that have been submitted for Karen so far, which at this point, if you're watching the video and I just released it, it's literally like, like four add-ons, which I just made. But the point of it is that now there is a single place where we can keep track of all the add-ons available for Karen. And from that comes an API. So I actually made an API that makes it easy to just pull this information for not only using for the Karen app, but if anyone ever wants to use it, that information is available. And you can find that by going to alfredo.lol forward slash API forward slash Karen. And then you can see all the add-ons available, which makes it super easy to just integrate that into anything else like the Karen app. As for installing the add-ons themselves, it's actually super simple. I just took advantage of SSH because I want to eventually have this device that lives in my local network that I could easily communicate with. And the obvious choice was just to go with SSH. And with that, I created my own add-on package manager for Karen itself so that it makes it really easy to just call the package manager from within the app and everything just works the way it's supposed to work. So like any other piece of software, we actually need a way to actually configure these add-ons. So for example, if a user needs to put some specific information to them in the actual add-on itself for it to work, then we need a way to put that into the settings of the add-on. So because of that, the Karen app actually allows you to configure specific add-ons that have that feature. So you can actually go ahead from the Karen app itself 
configure those add-ons without having to open the actual code for Karen. And you usually just do it from within the app super quick, which is awesome. And the last thing the Karen app allows you to do is configure the actual Karen device itself, right? Because you need to be able to configure those those properties to talk to it properly. The first thing actually being the SSH information to talk to the device itself, right? Because if we're communicating over SSH, we need to know what device that is. And very simply, the other thing is just configuring the path for Karen. So we need to know where Karen exists within the directories of our actual Raspberry Pi or whatever device we're using to power this thing. So that's the other thing that allows you to do very easily from within the app itself. So yeah, that's the Karen app. It is cross-platform, which is awesome because we can use it on an iPhone or an Android phone or an iPad or pretty much any device you can think of just because it is cross-platform. And if you're curious, the whole thing was built using React Native, which makes it really easy to port to different devices so that we don't have to actually go ahead and rewrite the whole code from scratch for every single platform but it's cool because now we have an easy way to actually go ahead and configure Karen install add-ons with literally a click of a button we could literally just click a button and we have an add-on installed and it makes the whole process so much easier and it just makes it seem so much professional right like I said the whole point was to achieve that polish that Amazon Echo has that we wouldn't be able to achieve if we literally had to go ahead and go and download an add-on somewhere and then install it by transferring files over it's, that's just a mess that's not that's not a good experience so using the Karen app, it makes it so much easier. And yeah, it's just cool to see that that's working and it just makes it so much simpler. So hopefully you enjoy the video and you're following along with the series because I'm super excited to see like the whole process, right? Like the final result is gonna be cool. It's gonna be great to have our own little device that just works like it should and it's integrated to an app and everything works the way it's supposed to work. And hopefully everything obviously works right. And then today I actually got something in the mail that's gonna make this whole thing so much cooler. So keep a look out for the next video. Hopefully all that turns out the way I want it to so we can pump that video out. It's, it's gonna be cool. If you're not really following the series, go ahead and do that. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I release a new part of the Karen series. It's it's gonna be cool. Uh, and I mean, that, that's all I can say. It's gonna be awesome and I'm super excited about it. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.